Hey everybody, and welcome to Swamp Songs. My name is Matt Weston, and today I want to talk to you about recording drums. Swamp Songs. Swamp Songs. So why do I want to talk to you about recording drums? First off, I've been playing drums since 1996 and have been recording since around 2000. And in my experience, drums are probably the single most complicated instrument to record, but also one of the most fun. I've personally tried recording drums a lot of different ways, from a one mic setup like Daptone did on Charles Bradley Records, to two mics, to the classic four mic Glyn John setup used on Led Zeppelin One. They're all great, but what I'm going to show you today is my 21 mic setup that I'll use if you hire me to do remote drum tracking for you. I find that this gives you every option you could want, and by mixing the balances of the tracks, you can get a lot of different sounds from this setup. But before we start talking about any mics or audio gear, let's go over this recipe for success. Number one, great drummer. Number two, great drums. Number three, great room. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you I'm a great drummer, but I have played on a lot of different records and I'll link to some of those in the description and you can be the judge. On to number two great drums. In 2018, I played drums on a record called These Signs by The Stereo Division. This is a band fronted by a friend of mine named Daryl McCarty. Now, 10 years earlier, Daryl was in a band called Chasing Arcadia, and I happened to record their drummer for some tracks. Well, I loved the sound of this drummer's kit, but there were no markings on it, and I didn't know who made it. When I asked him who made his kit, he told me that he did. So I said, would you make me one? And the rest is history. So the kick and toms are all custom made to my specifications. The cymbals are a mix of Sabian and Peisty, and I also have a few other cymbal options tucked away, and some snare options. But my favorite snare is definitely my Ayot Keplinger, and it lives behind the kit most of the time. And finally, number three, a great room. Now, if you were to ask a series of drummers or audio engineers what their ideal drum room is, you would likely get answers ranging from a concert hall to a stairwell to a really dead sounding room based on the music they like to listen to. And if you want to look more into how architecture has influenced music genres over the years, check out How Music Works by David Byrne. So my room has eight and a half foot ceilings and is quite a long room with varying widths. I've got strategically placed acoustic treatment around the drums so that if I want to get a nice tight drum sound, it's no problem. And then the room mics can really open things up. So I told you this is my 21 mic setup, but rather than talk about each of those mics separately, why don't I just record some drums and play you the tracks to hear the results. Okay, we're in the control room now, and I'm gonna show you the Pro Tools session and what the different mics sound like. So first off, I wanna show you um, the mix window here, and you can see in the tracks here, we've got nothing hidden. 
Um, I do have some parallel processing going on in these red and purple tracks. They are currently muted. And you can see some sends are active to them, but they're muted, so you won't hear that. And I'm using folder tracks here. So I've got one folder for the entire drum kit. There's a VCA that's grayed out. And then I've got a folder for any drum that has multiple mics on it. So there's a kick folder with the three kick mics, snare folder with the three snare mics, toms folder, and inside the toms, there are three folders with the two mics for each of the toms. And the only plugin that's active currently is Sound Radix Auto Align, which is a great plugin, very useful for recording drums to get everything in phase. So first I'll just play you a little bit without Auto Align so you can see uh, what that sounds like with no phase correction. Okay, we'll put that back in. Out. Back in. So to me, that just sounds like it's bringing it in focus and making sure that low end is nice and full. So let's go through the individual mics. I'm just going to make a loop here. And so this is the kick in mic. So this is an AKG D112, about three quarters of the way into the kick, pointing at the beater, Get, getting lots of nice attack. This one is a Peluso 2247LE out in front of the kick, but this is also going through an 1176 compressor at 8 to 1, and I think it was getting around 5 to 7 decibels of compression. So that compression brings up that room sound a little bit and uh, other mics in the kick, in the kit. This is the Yamaha sub kick. Some low end, but also some low mids in there. And the three of them combined. So let's move on to the snare. Classic uh, Sure SM57 on top. And there's a AKG C451 on top, also through an 1176 compressor, getting about uh, four to five decibels of compression at eight to one. Snare bottom. This is a Sennheiser Blackfire 541, kind of like a 441, but without the roll off. And that's the three snare mics combined. So let's find a section with the toms. And we'll start with the rack tom. And this is the 421 Sennheiser on top. Let's listen to the Shure SM57 underneath. Okay, and both mics together. Just the top mics from all three toms. Just the bottom mics. Now all mics on the toms. Now here 
there's some beats with fills so you can hear the leakage in the toms. Of course, I would gate these if I were mixing. So using the Oxford drum gate set on Tom, and this is how that cleans it up. Does a nice job. And if I put the drum gate on the kick and snare also, really cleans it up. Okay, I'm going to take those off again. For now, let's have a listen to the overheads. This is a pair of Neumann TLM 103s spaced apart. And these are going through a Rupert Neve Designs master bus processor just for a tiny little bit of fast compression uh, to avoid any transients clipping the converters. Okay, let's hear the hi hats. Go to the ride symbol. the mono room mic. That's a 2247 LE Peluso microphone about three to four feet in front of the kick. And right next to it are a pair of Royer R121s in Blumline. And then way at the back, a pair of Peluso R14 ribbon microphones going through the Rupert Neve Designs shelfer channels with a little bit of compression at eight to one. So remember that is the drums without any processing other than phase alignment. So if you want to do processing, you can get those gates on. And on the drum bus, here's some tape saturation. And so that's the Phoenix and then the Clarifonic parallel equalizer for some air. If you want a more classic sound, you can just do the overheads and kick and snare. Or the room ribbon air mics here.
want it roomier, bring up the room mics. Remember, all we've got are gates and a little bit of bus processing right now. So if we want to bring in the parallel tracks, some parallel compression, distortion, and some reverbs. Let's strip it right back down to the raw tracks so everyone can see what gets recorded. So let's jump ahead to Snares Off. Lighter sticks, doing some jazz. Some brushes. Now, if I were recording a brush track, I would alter the preamp levels so that we got a louder signal, but optimized for loudness. Okay, some uh, shuffle. Here's the individual drums. with a little bit of funk. And let's try to tighten it up and make it a little more modern sounding. Also, check out this book if you want to get some good drum tuning. I hope you found that informative and enjoyable. Remember to like this video and subscribe to this page for more content coming soon. And if you're interested in having me record some remote drums for you or any other studio work like mixing or mastering, please use the contact form at swampsongs.com. I'm Matt Weston. Thanks for watching. Swamp Songs. Swamp songs. it.